There's one thing you I, clearly were co-teaching here. If you have an opportunity, it is really nice to co-teach because you do support each other with a lot of the administrative stuff back, back in the background. So even if you have a colleague who's not ready to present yet, but who wants to kind of maybe practice, this is a, the conference is a great place to get that support. Um, for someone who might, I don't know what the, you know, whether you can have someone there to support you, but if you can, I highly recommend it. Um, so I want to share with you, there's a lot of questions around, you know, how much information, how in-depth uh, uh, information should we go, and a lot of that you're going to have to figure out by looking at your objectives, you know, who your audience is, and what they, what you know they need to know. Um, on but I do want you to keep in mind uh, Miller's uh, Law of New Information. So Miller's done some research on how much information can people take in? What's kind of the optimal amount of information for people to receive and accept? And so when we look at uh, if you've got 30%, anything under the 30% of new information, so uh, if, if uh, you have you know, just hardly any of its new information, that results in boredom. So if you don't have enough new information, people get bored. If you have more than 70% of the information that you're sharing is new information, so anything 71% or not, yeah, yikes. It's uh, people feel overwhelmed. So that's where they're no longer able to, to hear or take in, etc. So really anything between 30% uh, and 70% is kind of your, your good zone, your, your area in which people are receptive and engaged um, and not yet overwhelmed. Now if you are getting closer to that 70% mark, you know, you are getting towards the area where they're not able to really download the information too much. So um, as, you're, as you're looking at that information, you want to make sure you keep in mind, uh, at this point, you're definitely going to want to give them some opportunities to, you know, kind of let the information shift into their brain a bit because it's getting full. Okay? So that might help as you're deciding, okay, how much, how in-depth, where do I need to go? It'll be more challenging for those very diverse um, audiences that you have. And again, at that point, you want to find ways to engage those more experienced uh, members by hopefully helping them contribute and identifying them early. Uh, so something to keep in mind. Uh, in your handouts, you can, if you are one of those uh, folks like me who needs to take notes or, uh, you know, kind of keep your pen on paper, um, page 13, 14, and 15 all have kind of tips uh, for managing your visual aids. I'm really going to start by focusing on PowerPoint, and then I've just got a couple tips that we'll go over later about some of the uh, non-PowerPoint um, presentations. And I'm going to shift over here um, just so that you... I don't have to reach across the light. Um, when we're thinking about PowerPoint, I thought it was appropriate that we actually use PowerPoint to help make some of these points. Uh, but really, you want to ask yourself how many PowerPoints are appropriate. And in general, I'd say use them sparingly. The less, the better. Uh, one, because um, that whole concept of having four, you know, 500, 700 PowerPoints um, in, in a two-day class, you just there's. You can't, you're not going to pay attention. It's too many moving parts. It doesn't make sense. You're not going to be able to talk about them all. Um, and just seeing a picture is uh, helpful to uh, your visual folks, but they need, they, everyone needs some information behind the PowerPoint. So use them sparingly. You want to keep one up for about two minutes, not too much longer than that, or people will kind of zone out. Um, I'm going to talk about what you do, and it'll see a little bit later. If you have a slide, you're going to talk about it, but then you're not ready to go to the next slide yet. You feel free to use blank slides. Just put up a blank slide when you're done with your one so that they'll actually focus on what you're talking about, not waiting there, um, seeing what else you're going to talk about related to that slide. And then one key point per slide that uh, really get uh, focused on just that one idea that slide's representing, and then you go to the next one for the new idea. So those are some, some tips on how many. Um, I like to follow the rules six by six. So one of the keys here is that you want to uh, not have more than six lines of uh, text. 
so no more than six bullets, and that's pushing it. I think six, sometimes we have to go up to six, but I would really suggest you go less. Um, four is generally where I like to, to limit it, although I find often if I'm trying to get one idea, I do, sometimes I do need to do five. But no more than six, and then you don't want any more than six words per line. So that's the six by six rule. And as you can see, I'm not writing on this slide six lines, six words per line. I'm doing the six by six rule. Why am I doing this? More memorable. More memorable, yeah. What else? You're not reading the slide. Yes. Death by PowerPoint is when I'm here and I'm talking to the slide projector because that is my crutch, right? That's where I'm actually, I didn't write the slides for you, I wrote them for me so that I remember what I'm supposed to say. That's not what we're using slides for. Slides are here to supplement and add value to our presentation, not as a, as a support to us for remembering what we're talking about. Unless we can do it like this, six by six, what's six by six? Oh, I got it, okay? I like how also you have it written out in the handout in more depth. Thank you, great. So that's, uh, thank you for pointing that out. I do have it right here for folks who want to look at the details. Great. Um, so Pearson, yes. So what do you do, I mean, I know it's not appropriate to read, but when you have so much information that's not a discussion type, you know, presentation, how do you, you know, how do you remember all that information or not fall into reading the slide? Well, it is so technical. It's not like a discussion type situation. Yeah. You know? Yeah, so a couple of things, and then I'll ask, uh, I know Tom has some suggestions, and, and people in the room might have some suggestions as well. Um, so I do use the notes, uh, the notes sections of PowerPoint slides if I'm going to use PowerPoint slides, and I have some uh, particularly uh, data and facts that I want to make sure that not only I have the data and facts correct, but that I have the reason behind them, like the meaning behind them sometimes, uh, I will, I will write those in the notes page, and, um, and and sometimes I'll even look down and you know and make sure I've got it. Especially if it's a quote or something, I can look down. You can easily look down to to quote uh, facts, uh, figures, and and real quotes. Those are things that you can easily look down. Um, I know that, and I don't know what your uh, setup is um, at the Coupa conference, but they have presenter view. Uh, available in in this uh, on the computer and the laptop. So if you're at a place where you can easily stand behind the laptop and just kind of glance down and get used to like doing some sites, uh, checking in where you are, making sure you cover things, um, that's also helpful. A little bit later, Tom's going to talk about extemporaneous speeches and how to take notes for that. And so capturing those key notes and trust and practicing enough where you know what the filler is. Uh, that's the other piece that I suggest you do. Um, we do, I, I, we put, uh, sometimes we write that we have slides or which slide number depending on how uh, in depth or how new the material is. But we, we literally have, um, in our handouts we have what we're talking about. We have um, kind of the key uh, terminology or key lessons that we need to share and then we'll have our speaking points sometimes especially if we there's some key things we want to cover from an exercise for example or, or something of that nature so in our uh, our facilitator our, our teaching plan or our training plan we have all our notes there so if there's data we put the data in there so it's not attached to slides it's attached to my speaking notes so that's another way to do it yes what if maybe you did kind of two presentations and then with a lot of information on your slides and then printed them out as a handout and then on your slides that you presented you take a lot of the detail out so they can walk away with something with actual like regulations and stuff mm -hmm. but you're not reading it off the slides. I personally wouldn't do it in a slide format. I would probably do it as I did here and as I've often done. Um, in fact, I think it gets to this point. I know that there's more information that I would like you to have and that in some of my classes people are more uh, experienced in certain areas. And so I very often provide 
more of a, a text in my handouts, uh, and I don't go over it. And I even say, I'm not going to go over this material here. I'm covering it as we go through material, but this is really here for you as a resource after you leave. That way, I know I'm not going to be able to cover everything that they need to know. But if they ever are, you know, if they need it for some other reason, they can go back and they can look at it. So, so I also use that as a as a nice handout. Slides and handouts, totally different uh, medium. And so I think that it's important to think about what do we want them to have in their hand, and what do we want to to show them. And often those are two very different things. Yeah, and to her point, I think a lot of people are interested in our industry and use these PowerPoint presentations as reference uh, yes. material. Yes. Yeah. So would you suggest tying your slide to you know part of your handout so they knew, you know, so they could later on go back and forth or yeah, yeah. The question, can I have a copy of your presentation? Like they want the actual presentation. Yeah. Uh, we we often put that up. Uh, do you, can you put it up on a portal portal or? We would think it's a big post. Yeah, yeah, eventually, yeah. Eventually, yeah. You know, yeah. However long after the. Yeah. And we didn't have handouts last time because that that was the whole point. Yeah. We got. I know. Not be, everyone's not going to be happy with what you do, but like you know, some people wanted that that the whole printout of all 250 yeah. slides. And yeah. Some people appreciated the not yeah. paper, so I guess. Definitely. I think that. Um, and that's what we're going to do this year. Is, is we're we're, we're going to have you. Post, if you have a PowerPoint, we'll post it. If you have presenters' notes or something that you want to provide to them, we'll post that too, and they can take that away. And because we're not going to have, we don't want any handouts. Okay. We're yeah. trying to go electronic. Yeah. Good. So that's helpful. Um, so, and I'm I'm going to ask Tom to add his perspective. But I I definitely, my preference is to have PowerPoints and then have the material that matches the PowerPoints. I mean, you cannot, you need to make sure your words are the same, that what your tips are the same. Um, and I'm not taking handouts from another presentation and a PowerPoint from a different presentation. And even though they're kind of the same, using them together, no, that's not going to work. I want someone who's been in my presentation, who's seen the slides and, and heard me speak to be able to easily understand and make the connection between what the PowerPoint slide said and what the handout said. Now, I, I also know that people have gotten very used to um, writing notes on the side of the power, you know, the PowerPoint handouts, and and that's and that works fine too. Um, I'm I'm saying best case, you'd like to have two different venues. It's two different methods, two different me uh, venues. Yes. And that's uh, that's one thing I'd like if you can address because you know how you talked earlier about how people can't like even focus on what you're doing until they. Can, you know have something on a piece of paper or you know have a pen in their hand or like how you were talking about you know being able to use a highlighter as you were reading yeah. you know there are people who they don't even want to listen to you unless they have a handout it, yeah it, it's like well, what do you, there's no handouts it's like how do you like convince them they don't need it um, you can. I mean, I, I have to write when I so I have handouts. I mean, I, I either print handouts or I write notes on a page. So, you know, to write notes on the page. Uh, if you're posting them, I imagine that's going to be very clear to participants, and then it's their responsibility to, um, to print those ahead of time. Um, your responsibility is to create material that they'll find helpful. And then, uh, and then uh, you know, if you can have, and this would be things that I would think about as, and we do think about, like, do we need to just have blank piece, pieces of paper on the tables? Um, and asking the coordinators of the conference, do you have blank paper and do you have pens for people to use? Because if, if I need to take notes, I'm fine taking notes on that um, if I forgot to, to print down what I needed. And you can even say, if you need notes, go ahead and you've got some pages on the center of your table. Yes. For the situations where our presentations aren't going to be published, like for the criminal case studies, um, enforcement track, a lot of them aren't published. Those ones are, are those okay to have some handouts or? You, uh, you can, I mean, if you want to bring handouts, you can bring handouts. We're not going to be reproducing a lot of them. The other thing that we can do, though, if, if you, um, when everybody goes to your class, we'll have their email address. We can email them, your, everybody that attends, we can I'm email them your presentation. So they can get a copy that way, too. Just go ahead. Okay, you're cool. Yeah. Okay. Did you ask me a final question or was that? I was, no. okay, great, good. Um, I just want to make sure that I didn't miss something at the very last of your, thank you, Bill. Um, okay, so, so those, those are some of the rules. And we'll, um, 
let's see where we are. We'll come back to, to additional questions. Um, word management. You want to have less than uh, 36 words on, on a slide in general. You, if you can help it, you don't want to have more than that on a slide. Too many words, people just kind of blur over. You want to use high contrast colors um, whenever possible. Sometimes, um, you know, I, I've read uh, yellow on black, black on yellow. I hate yellow, so that really disturbs me. <laughs> so I stay with something a little bit less um, offensive to my personal eye. But, but you know, whatever it is, you want to have um, really high contrast colors. Reds um, are harder to see, um, so you only want to use reds if it's highlighting something or to, to really get people because they can't see the letters as well. Um, but they do; it does catch their attention. Um, so, so high contrast colors and large font and you want to go back to the back of a room if it's a very large room and make sure that it's the same. Um, on the screen and on your laptop come in differently so you want to look at what it looks like on a screen if you've got a lot of slides I mean you know just a couple slides I, I don't worry about it too much but if you're all day on slides you better make sure that those colors convey well on, um, on a big screen and from far away. So just uh, just a few tips, and then be consistent. Um, you know, just like the turtle won the race by just trudging along step by step, no fancy uh, moves, no sprints, etc. Be consistent with your uh, your slides. Make sure your um, background is you know consistent throughout. Um, maintain that similar look and feel, uh, same colors in SmartArt. Um, let me show you what that. I just want to highlight that this SmartArt this. Smart art. I also used here at the, uh, at this stage. I always make sure that if I'm beveling, I'm beveling the same throughout. If I'm using these colors, I'm using these colors throughout. I very rarely stick with the colors that they suggest in the template. I usually go for a little bit more pizzazz. But then you want to make sure that you're pizzazzing it the same all the way through. And if it's a very long presentation, you want to make sure that that's done. Now, having said that, you know. I use these smart art rather than bullets most of the time because I just find that it captures attention. It also forces me to be very concise in my words. So I, I create an environment in which I can't really uh, violate the rules of a good PowerPoint. Um, having said that, if every slide looked like this, not so entertaining. So I, I you know, consistent but not boring. Okay. And then same fonts. Um, and if you're going to do transitions, which I, I, I generally think they can be more distracting than helpful, I, I choose transitions if I'm trying to, like, like we handed out things um, throughout the day, if I want some surprise or I want to bring in some data and I don't want you to see it until we're talking about it, then I'll use a transition. But other than that, simplicity rules for, uh, for some of this. Make, make the interest in the material, not in the spin. Uh, as, as words come in. So, uh, so that's kind of my take on it and some of the research recently is, is supporting that, that take. Um, so those are just some uh, basics on uh, PowerPoint. Now I want to show you um, a couple quick samples, examples of PowerPoint, um, kind of the good and bad of PowerPoint. So I have here, um, some examples of a poor PowerPoint practice, and uh, this is coming uh, from uh, from a consulting company. Um, so, what's wrong here? Too much information. Too much information. Way too much. I can't even see it. I don't even know what's what it's talking about. So, way too much information. What else is wrong with this? Graphs are small and unreadable. Yeah, exactly. So, um, so not not helpful. What about this one? It's got pictures. What's wrong with it? Too busy. too busy, too much information, way too many numbers, um, two different fertility rates and less of livelihoods. It's not, it's just uh, not one idea and uh, too much going on. What about this? Hmm? Too many lines on there. Too many lines. Too many bullets. Too many bullets. Um, you know, I, I, these are confusing, so some of the extra things on there is a little confusing. Um, key achievements is one thing, key challenge is another, so one idea per slide, we violated that uh, already with this slide. Um, what about this? Too many words. Too many words. What about this? Oh, no. <laughs> 
Yep. Oh, <laughs> can you see anything? No. Yeah, you can't see a thing. It doesn't. It means nothing. I'll show you where this has been helpful, and it actually did work. And I'll, I'll show you an example of uh, of this. What about this? Same thing. Same thing. Too much, too small of words. Can't really understand it. Um, too much information. What about this? Hard to read. Yeah, hard to read. And too many words behind that. So if you're going to use the picture to share your story, use the picture, let the picture stand. If you're going to use a picture to support the words, use the picture to the side to support the words. Um, and that's generally, I mean, there might be some exceptions where you could get a really good contrast and very few words and have it stand out, but generally it won't. So let's uh, now go to how, how you could do uh, kind of more better practices with PowerPoint. Um, here, it's good to have an introductory slide with an overview of what you're going to cover. So we tell, and you're going to talk about this in a few minutes. Tell them what you're going to tell them. Um, and then keep your sides nice and clean. Again, as it follows what we talked about. It, this is quite a few words, but it is a goal, so you've got to share that goal. If you're going to share your mission statement, share your mission statement. If you're going to share the, share the vision statement, share that vision statement. Don't simplify that. Say what it is. Um, here we go. You know, please remember that as you're looking at this, this is just kind of the this is what works about this. But uh, the graphics it, uh, effective at clear, uh, sharing this clear uh, message about you know the ice ice core. So it's it's nice to see and it ties into you know what's causing. Um, atmospheric carbon dioxide with that picture supports the graph and it's not overlapping the graph. Um, in this message uh, is clear and supported by the graphics so it's uh, important to build on resi resilience and it's highlighting the graph that the piece of the graph that's important is this is our own crops. So, uh, so you can really hone in on exactly what, what you want to share. Here it's saying um, you know that there is a lot of information that needs to be shared, but here it's shared in a very simple way. Now I can't look at this graph, this graph, and necessarily tell you everything it's telling me. I don't know, but I can hear someone and look at this when I'm talking about what early rains and um, and fall start has on. Um, uh, the fact that in the future we're going to have greater uncertainty because we're going to have earlier rains, we're going to have false starts, we're going to have excellent O and D rains, whatever that is. So um, you might know, <laughs> I don't. <laughs> um, so, uh, so, so that's uh, an example of how you can share a lot of information. And then here's looking at African outlook, uh, May through July, main areas of concern, that pastoral areas limited uh, recovery despite good rains. And then really, really highlighting what they want to see where your extreme um, food insecurity is. And so it's, it's, again, it's focusing you in on where they want you to look on a rather busy graph, on a rather busy map. And then here again, it's a clear, uh, clean, clear slide, follows a lot of the rules that we talked about earlier. Um, I want to show you one more uh, example of a, um, of a slide um, of what was done and then um, through some support, one of, you'll see Office of Traffic Safety does a uh, operational meeting for the, all of the recipients of their Office of Traffic Safety uh, grants. And it's highly technical in that these are their fo the folks who need to do all of the documentation and manage the grants. And so uh, what they used to do um, is, and I'm not going to show this whole slide presentation to you, but I'm just giving you a sample of what they used to do. Uh, they'd go fiscal requirements, dot, 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 fiscal requirements personnel, a bunch of, of graphs, um, bullets, equipment. Does this look familiar at all? Have you seen this, this slide presentation before? It's a bunch of bullets, um, and then it goes into um, they, uh, you know, again, just just words and words and words because, <laughs> yeah, kill me now. And this was a whole day presentation. So then they would have you, uh, they would have the handouts with all of the, the actual um, material, and then they would use these bullets to to walk them through, um, and d weren't getting really good uh, results, and people weren't really happy, and there wasn't good compliance on. Um, 
on those programs. So they um, actually hired uh, me and uh, I hired a graphic person to come with us and we talked, we basically had the same presentation that we, a lot of the material, like what 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 helps people learn, uh, what, what helps them connect with the learning. And so they redid their whole PowerPoint presentation. I'm gonna show you the PDF of it. Um, and you're not gonna have, they actually had some um, music and things at different stages. But they took all of that bullets and they turned it into this. They created a nice graphic. This is our grant program. And then instead of all those bullets, they showed the, these pictures and talked about, um, you know, what does uh, alligator wrestling have to do with accounting? Yeah, and then they talk about uh, uh, some of the requirements around that. What, what, um, how do you, you know, money equals what? Well, it equals, um, you know, our pro the programs that you're actually putting on to. Um, uh, look at the mileage death rate of traffic fatalities and the fact that we've lowered them um, since 1946. That's what this grant program has done. And your uh, compliance with it will continue to support this work. Um, you know, then they talked about accounting records and went into what needs to be accounted for and how do they do that? What source documentation and what do you do? Um, equipment management, what's covered in that? And so they, they showed the actual pictures that uh, got people through this. Um, and then program income uh, with, with uh, piggy bank. Uh, talking about records retention, instead of listing all of them, they, they had lists at the tables and they used this as a backdrop. Um, sharing information about trade, uh, trademarks and copyrights and, and had the information in a handout form rather than on the slide because no one could ever follow on the slide. And so, um, and then I loved this warning, due dates are closer than they appear. One of the biggest problems they had with compliance was people actually turning things on in on time. So they wanted just to spend some time on that. Now here is where they said, we have to show the form because one of the biggest problems we have is they keep on doing the wrong forms. We said, well, they're not gonna be able to see the form. Can you see this form? No, you can't. That's fine, we just wanna show them what it looks like and then we're gonna point them to their table where we have the handouts and then we can actually share, um, go through it with them. So that, that was important to them because the forms look different. They wanted to be able to say, look for the form that looks like this. Um, and, uh, and that was pretty much their presentation. And then there was a talking, a talking uh, stack of bills that sang a song about money. Um, so they got some fun interest in it as well. They took this very heavy uh, text and turned it into really visual uh, support and relied on the actual documents as they walked through so people could actually highlight, write notes on the forms rather than listen to, uh, to people talk and then just see the bullets. Um, and they found that very helpful. So those are just a couple examples of how people have really turned a lot of information and even technical information into more easily understood PowerPoint presentations just using some of the techniques that we talked about already. Any questions? All right, then I want to share just a few more thoughts and then I'm going to turn it over and then I think it's a, it's break. Okay, good. Um, so just hang with me for about five more minutes and then we'll take a break. In your handouts, you have on page um, 16 some trainer tips for using other visual aids. So this is really all this information that I've written up on this chart paper for you. That when you're using a flip chart like this, you'll notice that we have it tilted at about a 45 degree angle. And, and that just allows for the greatest uh, visual across the room. And so you'll want to keep a 45 degree angle. Whenever possible, shoulders you want pointed toward your participants. Of course, when we're writing, we t typically turn to the side, but very rarely will you see us turning our um, back to you, and that's probably because we're trying to think. <laughs> that's not best practice. You don't want to ever turn your back to your, um, to your audience if you can help it. So shoulders toward your audience. Um, you want to get eye contact with people before you know they're asking a question or before you uh, directly are speaking to them. So you want to make sure you're getting that eye, eye contact, especially if it's a one-on-one. -on -one. Um, and when we're using a visual aid, uh, if you'll notice, Tom did this several times, but if 
and I'll share when you're actually when you're taking for example when you're working with markers a really nice way to work with is to work with multiple colors if you see we have multiple colors up here and a good way to hold your pen when you're using uh, markers with multiple colors is uh, in your non writing hand hold it in your fingers like this and then it's very easy for you to take one at a time and write with it and put it back. Hit the t so you're not spending time trying to take the tops off, picking it up, putting it down, etc. So this is a nice way to hold your uh, to hold your pens. What I'm doing here is I'm sh I'm really taking your attention to my visual aid. If I want you to see the visual aid, I want you to look at it. So I'm going to take your attention physically towards that. Um, when you're speaking about something, that's when you want to take, uh, reveal it. So as uh, you might have noticed throughout the day, um, Tom and I have had information covered. And then when we're ready to talk about it, we just come over and we, we flip, flip it over. Or, you know, I love, this is a beautiful uh, pr pr uh, projector because it allows you to, to easily open and close this so that when I'm ready, I can open it up and the slides are ready so you don't have to see me kind of fiddling around with uh, which presentation is it. Um, so that's nice uh, to uh, not keep things out until you're ready. Uh, point to the screen rather than to, uh, especially if it's an overhead, which we don't really use that much anymore, but uh, a lot of times you would point to the overhead, just point to the screen. Whenever you're pointing to something, point to actually where you, where you want your audience to look. Um, and then when you're done with something, and I didn't do it here, go ahead and flip it back over so there's a, a blank screen. Same, same with the PowerPoint we talked about, put up a blank PowerPoint um, where appropriate. So if you're done talking about something, go ahead and put a blank. Or in the case of this, you can just close it so that people aren't distracted. Um, we, we really like to be distracted. So we'll look for any opportunity to not focus, OK? So those are some tips there. We've also um, already talked about some other tips um, on page 15 that I just want to bring to your attention. Um, most of these we already have. But this uh, middle uh, but, um, bullet, avoid passing any object around the off, uh, audience. Instead, um, show, show the object and then make it available at the end of the session. Why would we say that? It's distracting, yeah, absolutely. It can be very distracting. Um, you know, I, I imagine there could be some exceptions to that, and I'm thinking about the pipes, for example. I might have, if, I might bring pipes for each area and just have, if it's something we're going to work with, I might have a pile of pipes at each table and allow people to, um, you know, to explore those as we go through. So I'm just going to think about that ahead of time. What I don't want to do, though, is pass one item around the whole room while, you know, while I'm talking about it. By the time I'm done talking about it, half the room hasn't seen it, and they're still waiting for it and so the whole time I've been talking have they been paying attention to me no they're waiting like hurry up where is it now so um, so we want to keep that in mind questions yes the comment regarding the blank slides yes I think you can just press W for a white screen to show up just W oh, and B for black I think that works if you're in the presentation mode nice. and I think you can if you want to go back to like do a slide that you had Previously, without like flipping through all of them on the screen, yeah, I believe you can just do that. But it's been a while. So I'm not sure. Oh, these techno savvy younger people. <laughs> Thank you. That's great. We'll have to test it out. All right. Well, I think it's time for a break. Let's go ahead and take 14 minutes. Is that? Or I mean, I'm sorry, nine minutes, because we gave you 14. Come back at five two. Nine minutes. Give a full ten, Kirsten. Come on. All right. We'll come back at uh, wow. two fifty six. <laughs>